Tonight, Aereo faces the justices. AT&T wants to be Netflix. Apple opens OS X testing to all in robots that want to serve you food. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 71 for Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. And number two. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to our top story. Aereo is making its case to the Supreme Court, started anyway, and joining me now to talk a little bit more about what it all means is David Spark, founder of the brand journalism firm Spark Media Solutions and friend of Twitter. Hey, David. Hey, Sarah. How Great are you? On. Yeah, this is a... This is a hot, hot, hot story, and it has a lot of implications. So, all right, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments for about an hour today in the case that people are saying is going to change TV as we know it one way or the other. Now, the Aereo has been battling uh, the large broadcasters and has actually had quite a few court wins. So why does anyone think that it's going to be any different uh, with the Supreme Court? Well, because of the way the Supreme Court was responding today, I mean, everything they said was kind of putting them on the defensive. Like, uh, well, Chief Justice Roberts said, you know, the fact that you have these thousands and thousands of tiny antennas, it kind of proves to us that you you set this up to skirt the law. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ginsburg kind of feels the same reason. He thinks, hey, there's no technological reason to have these all. And a lot of this a lot of all the questions going on was really kind of on the negative for Aereo. So it wasn't looking too good for them. What's interesting is that I know a few of the justices said more than once, I think uh, Justice Sotomayor was one of them, said, you know, even though Aereo is not a cable company in the traditional sense that a cable company is, if I, Sarah Lane, as the user, am able to watch a show on demand the way that I would with a cable subscription, how is it really different? Do you think the other justices will agree with that? And if so, what does that mean? Yeah, well, it's uh, that is a really good point that she brings up because it is extremely similar to it. And if you you look at like uh, paid services for video out there, like a Hulu, I mean, they are actually paying to get access to this content, which uh, Aereo is not paying access to get to the content. Now, understandably, this is not cable. This is over the air, which we can freely get access to. And they're trying to duplicate the whole process here, uh, but doing this sort of new distribution method that also involves the cloud as well. So uh, I I don't know the difference. I mean, it's it's kind of a very, very thin line. I, I, I kind of see Sotomayor's uh, point on this. Even if there is the implication that Aereo was created to get around the Copyright Act, if they are getting around the Copyright Act legally, and uh, Attorney David Frederick, uh, of course, is is arguing that they're they're not actually doing anything wrong. They've they've mm -hmm. just figured out a way to deliver broadcast content to us that didn't uh, uh, didn't exist before. How does Aereo take that to the Supreme Court and make sure that they get what they want? Well, <laughs> Aereo it has to uh, argue that this is not a public. Uh, distribution case. And that's that's the big line. This is just one individual person uh, essentially accessing via an antenna just like they would if they were in the location to get, to get the content. And what essentially Aero is acting is it's kind of like a middleman. Well, you're not here in New York to have an antenna to be able to get this over-the-air broadcast of, say, the, the Nets game. So we're going to uh, let you have it via our service. And that's where the line is a little bit shady there. But it is only an individual person getting access. And they argue, well, it's like you buy a Radio Shack antenna, but it's not the same thing because you're not paying a, uh, a monthly service to Radio Shack to distribute it over a distance that it was not intended to go. Because, you know, these broadcast antennas only go a certain distance, and now they're expanding it to literally anywhere in the world. The cloud was mentioned uh, more than once today. Companies like Dropbox, Google's cloud services. 
even though Aereo really does not seem like either of these companies at all, the idea of storing content in the cloud to be available for on demand is something that obviously, at least in the US, everyone's very familiar with. How are they getting put in the same sentence though? Aereo and Dropbox. And does Dropbox have anything to worry about? I don't think Dropbox has anything to worry about at all, but you could, in a way, duplicate this same service. But again, Aereo is doing this in a mass case, and it's very specific. Their service is designed to just do this. So technically, I could record something over the air here and take that video file and put it into my Dropbox for my personal use. But the moment I then start sharing that content, then that becomes public distribution of content that I don't own. So. But again, that's not the intended purpose of Dropbox. You know, it all goes down to the intended purpose. I mean, think back in the days, and again, this is not the same thing, but with Napster, the intended purpose, that the argument and the reason they're taken down, the intended purpose of this product was to distribute, distribute music illegally. And that's what they kind of essentially proved at that time, that that's what it was mostly being used for. And again, people don't mostly use Dropbox for the scenario that I described. So this is the early days, of course. The, the Supreme Court has, has there's more work to be done. Uh, we're going to hear both sides of the argument. What is your sense, though? I, I, I saw online of people who were following the case pretty closely that everyone was saying, huh, it sounds like Aereo really has its work cut out for it for the first time, whereas some of the other legal battles they seem to breeze through. What's your take? Yeah, I would agree with the public sentiment here. The... Uh it's going to be a tough one, but it's not. It's still not clear cut, and there's no doubt about it. If this comes down on Aereo's side, then this is majorly damaging for broadcast television because now they no longer control their markets because now there's this third party that essentially taken it and distributed to the world. Um, and and one of the comments that was made was, if that happens, then we're just going to become a, a, a paid cable service, all the broadcast channels, which. I don't believe that's going to happen. But you know what? This is not the first time we're going to see an Aereo-like type company. This is going to continue to happen as more and more content becomes digital. And I think the days of over the air are going to be numbered. Oh, well, I don't like to hear that. I love my over the air uh, service. I mean, I love it too, but I think it's going to be numbered as everything becomes, you know, digital. I mean, we do have digital television now. Do you think, you, know, you, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, companies threatening to take their, their, their content cable only. I know CBS said that most recently, and I don't think that they were the only broad, broadcaster who threatened. Do you think that those are empty threats? Do you think they would ever do something like that? I think it's a little bit of an empty threat too, but you know, you know, one of the comments that was made, uh, uh, by who who made that was it was a Ginsburg, I think. Oh, I don't want to get the wrong. Uh, the, there was one of the uh, justices that didn't understand the difference between over the air and cable. And there's some people, you know, kids today they will never know the difference between over the air and cable if they're growing up in a uh, cable household, for that matter. So a lot of people don't comprehend. You know, there's a time you could have gotten television for free, and. For many people, they just don't know that time and will never know that time or nor understand uh, that was the case. Then again, you know, the justices of the Supreme Court are deciding the fate of, of many yes. of us who like to consume content. You certainly want them to know the difference. We would hope so. <laughs> uh, David Spark of Spark Media Solutions, thanks so much for joining us and shedding a little bit more light on how Aereo is, uh, is uh, it's trying to, uh, to argue its way to freedom in court. This will definitely be a very, very hot case to watch, and it's uh, the results will be major implications. Indeed, indeed. Let folks know how they can keep up with you. Uh, just go to sparkmediasolutions.com. Check us out. We got uh, fun stuff. All right. Thanks so much, David. And it's freely available. Yay. Love that. Distributed as much Stay as you Stay out of the like. Supreme Court. It's, <laughs> it's messy business. Thanks, David. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com, which offers thousands of online video courses and software, creative and business skills. Maybe you want to learn the latest software applications like Lightroom Mobile, how to protect yourself from heart bleed. If you don't know what you're doing, you really want to make sure you know how to do it. Or get started with 3D printing with the lynda.com subscription. 
Members receive unlimited access to the entire course library. That's a lot of courses. Lynda.com works with software companies to provide you updated training the same day new versions hit the market. So you always have the latest skills. You're not working with some version of a software program that's already been updated once or twice. You also learn from experts. All of the courses are high quality productions. Whether you have just 15 minutes to learn a new skill or 15 hours to watch an entire course, you can learn at your own pace on your own terms. It's only $25 a month for access to that entire course library at lynda.com or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan that gives you extras like exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven day trial. You wanna take advantage of this a whole week. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 and access that entire library, over 2,400 courses, completely free, all for you for seven days. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N and the number two. All right, let's get straight into our tech feed. The rest of the stories we're covering today. AT&T, the U.S.'s second largest broadband provider and wireless company, is creating a Netflix-style streaming video service because, you know, we don't have enough of those. A $500 million joint venture with the Churning Group, which is a producer of a variety of television and media content, is going to get the ball rolling. Their majority stake in Crunchyroll, a subscription video on-demand service, will be at least one asset to the project. But as of now, it's not exactly clear what other content will be available at launch. Amazon's smartphone isn't expected until later this spring, though reported handset prototypes have already started circulating on the net. Today, Boy Genius reports cite sources that say the reported multiple camera and sensors that power 3D effects for the phone and track user movements will be present in several stock Amazon apps and gesture controls would power navigation without the need to tap or type anything. So by tilting the handset in different directions while the device is in use, Amazon's interface could display additional information on the screen without a user having to touch anything. Apps like Yelp, IMDB, a calendar app could all take advantage of this. Rounding out the rumors, sources say, and they are unnamed sources, the new phone could have optical character recognition, also known as OCR, which can recognize text taken on a sign or another real life object with a built-in camera, and then the phone could convert it to a note or contact entry. Well, Pavel Durov, the founder of Vkontakte, or VK, Russia's largest social network, says he was forced out of the company completely and then fled the country because he felt threatened by Kremlin officials. Durov claims he refused to share user data with Russia, Russia's law enforcement, but that the network is now effectively under state control. He's been fired from the board. He says it was based on a technicality involving his resignation back on April 1st. And he tells TechCrunch, quote, I am out of Russia and I have no plans to go back. Unfortunately, the country is incompatible with Internet business at the moment. Well, kids, back in my day, you needed a developer account to help test Apple's upcoming software releases before they were officially released. And that cost $99 per year as a developer account. Times are a changing, though. Apple just introduced its OS X beta seed program to make pre-release Mac software available to anybody who wants to help try it out. As long as you have an Apple ID, you can test out Maverick's pre-release builds, then submit feedback to Apple to help it iron out the kinks before everybody else gets it at official launch. The program comes with its own special utility software for installation. It makes pre-release versions of OS X visible in your Mac App Store's updates tab. You will need to agree to Apple's beta seed and confidentiality agreement to participate, but there's no fee. After testing among a select group of users, Twitter's new profile pages are officially official for all users who visit the web-based version of Twitter. It now includes an option to pin a tweet, highlight best tweets, even use filtered tweets. So a pinned tweet is a single tweet that stays stuck to the top of your profile page until you unpin it or, or replace it. The filtered tweets will help you filter by tweets or tweets with photos or videos or at replies best tweets will show your most engaged tweets as larger than the rest of your feed and if you use a third-party twitter app like i do absolutely nothing has changed now for the robot portion of tech news tonight let's head on over to the robot restaurant in china's Hai Longjiang province 
I hope I got that right. Where all the food is prepared and served entirely by 20 robots with very little human oversight at all. The BBC actually took a tour of the restaurant and found that cabinets are loaded with the necessary ingredients. A human presses a button that corresponds to what dish needs to be prepared. Then one of four chef robots starts making the dishes. A server bot will then take the food to the appropriate table. And then a singing robot might provide entertainment while the food is being enjoyed by the guests. Now, according to Amusing Planet, each of these robots costs between $31,000 and $47,000, but over time, will still save the restaurant money on labor fees. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. It's a good one. Tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.